Hello. As you can see, today's game will be uh, Thebes. I believe this came out in 2007, although this version, uh, I think, came out later than 2007. I don't know what the differences are between the original, um, but I just bought this one a few weeks ago uh, on Amazon. I think it was on a sale or something. Uh, anyway, let's get uh, started with setup. First, unfold the board and put it in the uh, center of the table between all players. First, each player will take a set of five excavation permission tokens. You should have an orange, purple, yellow, green, and blue for each player. Each player will take an archaeologist figure, a time marker, and a time wheel in the color of their choice of player. So for a three player game, which I'm going to do here, I've got green here, he's got archaeologist time marker and excavation permission tokens. And again, the color of your time wheel can be seen here and the same for red. You take your deck of researcher cards, be sure to remove the 10 exhibition cards from the deck, then shuffle the deck. Then you draw four cards and place them on the spaces provided here on the board, like so. Divide the remainder of the deck into three equal stacks. Take your small exhibition cards, the one with the four points over here on the left hand side, you take the five of those and shuffle those into the second stack. Take your large exhibition cards, the one with the five point value over here, and shuffle those into your third stack. So let me shuffle those stacks. Just as a note, if you're only playing a two player game, you would shuffle all the exhibition cards into the second stack. Now you place the first stack on top of the second stack that will Form your card supply, your third stack you'll just set aside and that will be used later in the game. In a two or four player games you would place all the players time, time markers here on the start space. In a three player game you place all the time markers on space 16. And maybe I'll get them all on there. Next you place all players uh, archaeologists here in Warsaw. And if you look at the board that I have, the version I have, it looks like it's got a maybe a German uh, and English version uh, of the words on here. Next you take the year marker and in a two or three player game you place it on 1901. If you were playing with four players you would place it on 1902. Each player keeps his excavation permission tokens and time wheel in his play area. His or her play area. You place the five summary cards somewhere near the board. The summary cards in my version did not seem to come in two languages, so I guess uh, maybe that's German, I'm not sure, but you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be Egypt, um, Greece, Crete, uh, Palestine, and uh, Mesopotamia. And those match up with these locations on the board, which it is in both languages here. Um, each excavation site has a matching uh, colored cloth bag, which you should fill with the uh, excavation tokens prior to play. The excavation tokens match the color of the bag they go in. You should remove one value, one artifact from each of the excavation bags, cloth bags, and place the value one artifact on that excavation site of its matching color. 
the first person to excavate there will gain that uh, artifact. And that complete setup at this point you should be ready to play. Alright so the goal of the game is each player is an archaeologist and you'll travel around Europe uh, gaining specialized in general knowledge uh, equipment and then go to these excavation sites where you will excavate um, and uh, acquire artifacts which will give you victory points uh, which will help you to win the game um, traveling and excavating all cost time which is what your time markers move along this time track here and at the end of 1903 oh well once all players uh, markers have passed the uh, 52 week spot um, then the year will move up to 1902 then again once all the players have passed the 52 again the year marker will move to 1903 and then finally uh, players must end once they pass the 52 week they can't move any further on the time track once the last player uh, has passed its the 52 weeks in 1903 then that will end the game and you'll add up your victory points which we'll talk about how that works later but let's see what you can do on a turn first uh, play order will always be the player whose time marker is last on the time track will always be the player whose turn it is at the beginning of the game and in future turns If more than one time marker is uh, on the last uh, space on the time track or you know furthest back on the time track, then the player whose time marker is on top of that stack, um, it's their turn. So at the beginning of the game, the player whose time marker is on the top of the stack, which players can decide who they want to be first player, but the player whose marker is on the top of the stack will be first player. And if you ever, if your marker ever lands on the same space where somebody else's time marker is, yours will go on top. So on your turn, you'll move your archaeologist and then execute an action. Now when you move your archaeologist from one city to the other, you move along these dotted lines. Each uh, destination, each stop along a destination will cost one week so if this archaeologist moved here that would cost him one week if he moved here that would cost him two weeks and then you would move your time marker two weeks or two spaces on the board so uh, one two this would cost three weeks but once you've moved your archaeologist, then you must execute uh, an action. So let's talk about what the different actions are. So one of the actions you can do is to take one of these research cards. And you have to be in the city uh, that's on the top of the card in order to take that. So, for instance, if the blue player wanted to take this uh, research card, he would have to be in Berlin, so for his move, he would move one space to Berlin. That would cost him one week. And then he would take this card, and he would have to pay the number of weeks shown in the top uh, right-hand corner of that card, which would be uh, another week. So that action would cost him two weeks, one for moving and one for taking this card. So he would move his marker one, two weeks. And now the red player, it would be the red player's turn. But... Uh, before you do that, anytime you take a research card after you've taken it, then you refill it from the supply, like so. I did want to mention in my version of this game, uh, in the instructions, it did not uh, mention that when you take a research card that you have to pay in weeks um, the number of times shown in the top right corner of the card, but, uh, you know, it kind of made when I didn't see in the rules that you had to pay anything but the movement and it just said you could take the card I didn't think that was right so I did look up uh, uh, on, from different sources and that's where I saw uh, that you do have to pay in time um, what's shown in the top right corner of the card when you do take a research card so why that wasn't in my uh, 
version of the rules, I don't know, but that is the rule. All right, another action you can take if you're in Warsaw, uh, a player for his action can discard all four cards from the board um, just into the discard pile and then draw four new cards from the supply to replace it and that would cost one week. If you, um, if it was still your turn uh, after you spent that one week, say for instance, you know, these were here and the green player decided uh, he was going to take that action um, to discard all four of these cards to the discard pile, which we'll just say is right here, and draw four new cards. He would pay one week. Well, since his mark time marker is still last on the time track, it would be his turn again. If he decided to take that same action again, um, instead of uh, it just costing one week, it would then cost two weeks, and so forth. So if 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 you um, it, if it continues to be your turn and you continue to take that action, it costs an additional week each time. But the first time you do it is just one week. All right. The third type of action you can take is to uh, is to execute an excavation. So if you move your, say it's Blue's turn, and he moves one, two, he wants to exav excavate here in Crete, so he moves two to Crete, so that's going to cost him uh, two movement. I, go, I like to go ahead and move my time marker after I've moved, just so I don't forget I've done that, but I think the rules kind of stay, you spend all your time and then move your time marker, but you can do it however you want. Anyway, then to ex execute an excavation, you must have a valid excavation permission marker, which uh, in this case, if he's digging here, he has one that you know matches the color there in Crete. Um, so he has a valid excavation permission marker, and you must have one point of specialized knowledge in that um, for that excavation site and that's uh, seen by th these books that are the same color of the excavation site those count as specialized knowledge uh, a, a book um, that looks like this is general knowledge and there are other ways to get uh, specialized knowledge um, and general knowledge which we'll uh, talk about in a minute but um, for now, we'll just say, again, to do an excavation at a site, you have to have a valid excavation permission and at least one point of specialized knowledge for that excavation site, which here, this guy has one, two, three, four points of specialized knowledge. So he's allowed to excavate there. So the next thing you do is total your knowledge. Now, uh, here, he's got... Um, these are technical books for this excavation area. So again, he's got one, two, three, four points of specialized knowledge, and then he's got one, two points of general knowledge. Now you can never use more general knowledge, more points of general knowledge than you have of specialized knowledge. So if he only had uh, one point of special knowledge, he would only be able to use one point of general knowledge um, uh, out, of, out of this instead of two because again you can never have more general knowledge than you have special knowledge but again back to this so he's got four points of special knowledge plus two points of general knowledge gives him a total points a total of six points of knowledge then you grab your time wheel and move the top number to the total number of knowledge you have so in this case six and then you determine the number of weeks you want to dig. So if he was going to dig one week, he would get to draw one token from the bag. If he was going to dig two weeks, he could draw two, three weeks, three. So in this example, we'll say he's going to dig four weeks and he gets to draw uh, four tokens from the bag. So since he's going to dig four weeks, he's got to move his time marker four weeks. One, two, three, four. And now 
he gets to take the purple bag because that's where he's digging in Crete. And again, we said he gets to draw four tokens. So without looking, you stick your hand in the bag and kind of mix up the tokens and draw out four. One, two, three. I'm having some pretty good luck here. Four. So these two I would want to keep. I got two artifacts, one worth five points and one worth three points. So I would keep those in my play area. These that are blank are just worthless debris and they have to go back in the bag after you've drawn. So I've executed my excavation. I got a couple of good artifacts and now I have to flip my excavation permission token over and now I no longer have an excavation permission token for Crete um, and I don't get to refresh that until my time marker has passed the 52 weeks and and I start a new year but also if you notice because I was the first person to dig here I also get to take this one uh, valued artifact into my play area so the first person to dig in in a excavation area always gets to take um, that one valued token. So that is executing an excavation. I did want to show a few other cards that uh, these are an assistant. If you have two assistant cards that adds one specialized knowledge of, of any excavation um, if you have two assistants, that will add one to your specialized knowledge. If you have three assistants, that will add two to your specialized knowledge. And again, that's for any colored um, excavation site. The shovels, if you have two shovels, you get to draw one extra token, no matter where you're excavating at. And if you have three shovels, you get to draw two extra tokens, no matter where you're excavating at. Now, both of these, um, if you want to, if you just have one for this, like you could discard. If you, I guess I should have mentioned, if you have two of these, you know, like I said, you get um, one extra specialized knowledge. If you have three, you get two extra specialized knowledge, and you get to keep those cards. But if you want to, you can, if you just have one, you can always discard one to get one specialized knowledge. And the same for the shovel. Um, you, you don't discard them. If you have two, you get one extra, you draw one extra token. If you have three, you draw two extra tokens and then you keep them. You don't discard them. But if you ever uh, just have one and want to use it, you can discard it to get one extra draw. All right, I wanted to show some other types of card. If you have this Zeppelin card, you can move um, any amount on the board and uh, discard it and pay zero weeks um, for moving. So if you had this card, if you had picked up this card and you wanted to move, if you were over here in London, you could move one, two, three, you know, all the way over here to Palestine and discard that card and then you would pay no um, wink, weeks for movement. But again, you do discard it. If you have this vehicle card, if you uh, move three or more um, spaces for your movement, you get to reduce the movement cost by one. So if you moved three spaces, you would only pay two weeks of movement. And you don't have to discard this. Uh, you keep it in your play area, so you could use that every time you moved three or more uh, spaces. You would get to reduce your travel time by one week. This is a special excavation card. You know, normally I said after you excavate a, a site, you have to turn over your excavation permission for that site, and you can't uh, flip it back over. Um, and use it again until you've completed that year past the 52 week mark of that year well if you have the special excavation card you can discard it to excavate at any site you're at so even if you'd already um, spent your excavation permission marker for 
uh, let's say Crete here if you wanted to go there and dig again if you had one of these special excavation cards you could then discard that card and you would be allowed to dig again at uh, Crete instead of waiting till you could flip your permission marker back over at the end of the year these cards um, allow you to have two extra points of specialized knowledge from rumors and legends from the people um, for this color so uh, if you had this card that would give you two extra points of specialized knowledge for uh, Palestine the green and you do have to discard that after you use it as specialized knowledge Another type of card you can get is these Congress cards and you'll get points at the end in scoring depending on how many of them you have and you can see how many points you'll get on this chart. So if you have one, you'll get one point. If you have five of these cards, you'll get 15 points and if you have seven of them, you'll get 28 points. That's the most any uh, one player can get. And final action that you can do and one of the type of cards we haven't talked about yet is uh, executing uh, an exhibition. So whenever somebody's taken one of these cards and you're drawing cards to refill the board, if you draw an exhibition card like this one, you place it on the first available space here on the board, which originally is going to be A. If another card is drawn, this one will be shifted down and the next one drawn would be placed on A. Um, again, if another one is drawn, then this one would be shifted, this one would shift down here, and then the next one drawn would be placed on A. And if you have to shift again and shift this one off, it just goes into the discard pile. So, as I said, the last possible action you can do is execute an exhibition, and to do that, you would have to move your archaeologist to the um, city shown on the exhibition um, you're going to do so in this case you know the only one I've got on the board is London so say if red was going to do that he would have to move one two spaces to London that would be two weeks and then he would have to show that he's got one artifact from Greece and two artifacts from Egypt so he just has to show those uh, to the other players and then he has to pay this amount of time so that would be an additional three weeks in including to the two weeks that he moved and then he would take this exhibition card into his play area and it'll be worth uh, four points at the end of the game and so again players will take turns um, taking moving and taking actions um, as I mentioned before once a player's uh, um, time marker passes the 52 week space they will uh, you know flip back over all their exhibition uh, permission or excavation permission tokens any that they had used they flip them back over when the last player's uh, marker passes the year then they would move to a new year and again uh, at the end of when the last player's marker passes uh, 1903 then that will end the game now I did want to mention a couple of things if you are doing an excavation um, your markers here and you're doing an excavation and uh, maybe you move two weeks to get where you're going to excavate and then you spend four weeks to exca excavate so you move one two three four and then you've got to flip, you do your excavation and you've got to flip over your marker. Well, even though you're already past the year, you, you don't have to wait another year to flip your excavation permission token back over because that's kind of the last thing you uh, do as part of your turn. So even though your time marker passed it when you're doing your excavation, um, you do still get to flip that back over i had to look that up in the, the forums on bgg it did say that and uh, one other thing when you're on the last uh, year once your token reaches the 52 that's as far as you can go so if you were trying to do an excavation maybe you moved uh, one two to get to where you're going to excavate 
and you're on the last year, the most you could spend is three weeks uh, digging. You couldn't spend five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because your marker has to end at the 52. Actually, that's not right. You get to move on to the one space um, once past the 52, so your marker has to stop there. All right, so now let's talk about final scoring. Once the last player um, has has uh, crossed the you know the 52 week spot at 1903, then that will end the game, and then you'll go to scoring. So once you go to scoring, you tattle, you know, add the total of all your artifacts. Then you total your exhibitions, you know, so that would be another eight points there. You score. Them the points shown here. Then you total your Congress cards again in this example he's got two so that would be a total of three additional points. Then players will total their specialized knowledge at, um, in each site and the player with the most special knowledge um, in each site will get uh, five additional points if uh, there's a tie for the most, then the players will each get three points instead of getting the five. And when you're uh, totaling specialized knowledge, um, you only use the, the technical books, the assistance and general knowledge and uh, notes that, that don't, don't count, only the technical books. And then the person who has the most points wins the game and at least in my version of the rules there's nothing that states uh, <laughs> if there's a what the tiebreaker is if there is a tie in the total number of points so that's how you play Thebes I'm gonna reset the board uh, and then we'll go through a few example turns one thing I wanted to mention when I was talking about the uh, final scoring, and I said uh, when you're doing the most specialized knowledge in a category, <clears throat> um, I said just pretty much the technical books count, the assistance and notes um, do not count. The notes is the same as the uh, legends of the people, rumors, cards, I don't know, in the rule books they just, in the English rule book I guess they called things different names I don't know but anyway it's pretty much only the technical books that count uh, for um, scoring for the who got the most specialized knowledge in each category and I didn't mention um, these summary cards they just basically show you know what value artifacts are in each bag and how many of them there are so you can kind of determine I guess if it's worth still digging in a site when some of them are already out uh, anyway, let's get started um, with some example turns. I've put the board back to how it should be at the beginning. Oh, and one other thing. There is this kind of little reference, and it has uh, information on each of the artifacts that you can draw out of the bag, like information on what the real artifact is and uh, when it was discovered and when it's from and that kind of thing. So if that interests you, you can look at that. All right, so let's get started again because blue is on top. He's the first player And we'll just say he wants to get this uh, Technical notes here, so he's gonna move to Berlin or I said blue so He's gonna move to B Berlin from Warsaw, so that's one week and then that costs two weeks to get that card So he puts that in his play area Has to move his thing one two more weeks, and then he replaces that card Um, and now it'll be Red's turn. Uh, red. We'll say he wants to get this. That's in Vienna. Again, these cards, <laughs> they don't have the English word for it, but you can see, I guess that's Wien or Vienna. So he's going to move to Vienna. So that's one week and then two weeks to get this card. So a total of three weeks for Red. One, two, three. And when you, uh, move in the same space as somebody else your marker goes on top of theirs and he's got to replace that card alright so now green is the furthest one back so it's his turn and 
just for a change of pace, we'll say Green wants to get this shovel, so he's got to go to London. So that's one, two to go to London, and three to get this shovel, so a total of five. One, two, three, four, five. So he will take that shovel. Now he's got to replace that card. And now red is the furthest one back on top, so it's his turn. And I, and I notice I forgot to mention something in, a, in my overview. When your uh, supply of cards runs out, remember we set that uh, third stack aside during setup. So when your card supply runs out, you shuffle any discards in the discard pile into the um, third stack that you set aside at the beginning of the game. And that becomes your new supply of cards. If that ever runs out, you just reshuffle any discards that are still there and that becomes your new supply. But anyway, back to Red's turn. Red thinks he'd like to get this general knowledge. Um, again, the general knowledge can be used at any excavation site. Um, but again, you can't use more general knowledge than you have specialized knowledge. But it is expensive, six. But anyway, he's going to do that. So he's going to move to London, one, two, and then take the that card. So that's uh, six. So that's going to be a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then he's got to replace that card. All right. And now the furthest back is blue, so it's blue's turn. And maybe Blue wants to get this Congress card, so it's in Paris, so he's just got to move one to Paris, and then two time to get this Congress card, so that's going to be a total of three that he's got to pay, three time, one, two, three, and then he's got to replace that card, and now the furthest back is green, so it's Green's turn, and we'll say Green wants to get this Specialist, and it's in Rome, so Green's got to move one, two to Rome and then two to take the specialist because two right there so a total of four so one two three four and then he's got to replace that card and uh, now blue is furthest back so it's blue's turn again I'm gonna play ahead until uh, maybe I'm gonna do an excavation or something and I'll come back all right, I've played a little head a little bit. I'm not at an excavation or a, ready to do an excavation yet, but I did want to show something. It's Green's turn because Green is furthest back. Uh, Green is in Paris and wants to take this card in Paris. So Green doesn't have to move. You don't have to move. You just always have to take an action. So Green doesn't have to spend any movement, but Green will spend two to take uh, this card from Paris. So one two and then refills the stack all right I just wanted to show that all right I'm gonna show another example I've played another couple turns it's green's turn because he's on top furthest back he wants to get this other shovel in Moscow which is going to be one two three spaces away well I, green had got this uh, um, Zeppelin so he's going to discard that into the discard pile so he can move to Moscow and he doesn't have to spend any time so now he can go ahead and take this shovel and just pay the three time for that and then refill and then you can see we start to have a discard pile here all right it's Red's turn um, I think he's going to go do an excavation at yellow. So he's got to move all the way down to Egypt. So he's got to go one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four to move to Egypt. And now he's got to total his knowledge. So he's got a total of, well, he does have a valid excavation. Uh, permit and he's got a total of three four five special knowledge and two general knowledge remember these can be used for any so that gives him a total of five six seven knowledge so he's going to move his wheel until it says seven up at the top and now he's got to determine how many weeks he wants to spend there 
So he could spend, if he spent seven weeks, he could get six draws, but I think he's just going to spend six weeks, or just five weeks, and get five draws. So he'll move his marker another five, one, two, three, four, five, because he's going to spend five weeks there. All right, so now he gets the yellow bag, and he gets to draw five tokens. So let's see. Let's see what he gets. One, that's a good artifact. Two, oh, good. Three, uh oh. Four, uh oh. Five, oh, well, he got three worthless ones, so we'll throw those back in the bag. But he did get two artifacts, so that's not too bad. And because he was the first to dig here, he also gets this one. So. He got a value 4, a value 2, and then the value 1. And so you see, now he has to uh, flip over his um, permit, ex excavation permit for Egypt. And he can't uh, dig there again this year, although he's almost at the end of the year. So it'll get flipped back over here pretty quick. And he actually does have this special excavation uh card where it would let him dig at any site anyway so if he did want to dig there again uh, he could still do it all right and we'll show another one it's green's turn um he's going to go to palestine so uh one two to move there and then <clears throat> he's going to excavate in palestine now he's got two general knowledge he does have a valid permit two general knowledge two from his rumors <clears throat> rumors and notes or but he does have to discard this so but we're going to count that so that's going to be two four and then two for these general knowledge so that's six um he could discard this one assistant to get an additional <clears throat> but he thinks he'll save that and hopefully get some more assistance later so we're still at six um so he's going to put his thing on six which is where it's at and decide uh, he'll dig for four weeks and that'll give him uh, four draws but he has three shovels so that's going to give him two additional draws so he's going to actually get to draw six tokens but because he's digging for four weeks we got to move his marker four one two three four and now we get the green bag and draw out uh, four, five, six tokens because of the shovel. So we'll see. There's one, two, three, four, five. Uh oh, he's not having very good luck. Six. All right, well, he got two artifacts. And then all these uh, worthless debris go back in so you see every when good artifacts come out and and the debris goes back every future excavation there you have less chance of actually getting something good uh, as the game goes on there becomes less and less artifacts in there to pull out and now <clears throat> he does flip his um, excavation permit over but because now he's started a new year, um, passing the 52 week, he started a new year, he actually does go ahead and get to flip that back over again now. Um, and so then it would be Blue's turn. But I think you see pretty much how the game plays. Um, once uh, Blue takes his turn, he's probably going to pass the year marker and then Red will pass it and then we'd go on and move the marker up to a new year. And again, you play till the end of 1903 and then score. So that's the game. Um, it's okay. I haven't played it with, uh, you know, like I said, I just got it a couple of weeks ago and I played it by myself once. And uh, I haven't played it with any other people. Hopefully it's more fun when I'm playing it with, uh, with some other real players. Because just playing it by myself, uh, you know, I thought it was okay, but... Uh, nothing nothing that would really want to draw me back to it but I do want to give it a try with uh, 
other players and hopefully I can get my wife and daughter to play and we'll see how it goes. But uh, that's it. That's Thebes. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.